Hey everyone, Xanagir here. Spelunky 2 has been out for nearly a full year, and I've made over 180 Spelunky videos in that time. I started doing this to teach people tips and tricks as well as keep people up to date with the game and the community surrounding the game. With the amount of new strats being discovered slowing down a fair bit, I decided it was a good time to make this video, showing you every single trick I could possibly think of used by speedrunners, score runners, casual players, and everyone in between. This video will feature 44 different strats sorted by difficulty which will be shown using these Kapalas. I put a lot of love into this video and I hope you learn a lot from it. If you do, make sure you leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel for future videos as well as follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash where I stream every weeknight and try to be good at speedrunning this very hard video game, Spelunky 2. And now for the strats. Enjoy. Let's start off simple. To easily rob a shop, all you have to do is stand on top of the shopkeeper and use a rope. Make sure you're holding any items you want to wear like a jetpack before roping. If you find yourself in the jungle without the U-Jet, you can sometimes use other back layer doors nearby to teleport straight into it like this. There are a few different ways to do this next tech, but this one uses the fewest bombs. Pay attention to the placement of your character's hands, and use the ground texture to line up your bombs. Mash the door entry while on Olmec's head to grab the Ankh without the need of a pesky boss fight. Another Olmec fight, but this time we're actually going to interact with him a bit. This will let you go to temple on low percent runs by using the push block to keep his levitators in reach. This is not the fastest way to do it, so I'll show you another way later in the video that is a bit more difficult. This one's simple. Just stand below Tiamat's head and teleport up into her face for a free kill. If you miss, just make sure you land on her shoulder if you don't have a way to prevent fall damage. A somewhat goofy technique, but effective nonetheless. Once you kill Hundun, just fall into the spikes, and as long as you have an Ankh, it'll put you right at the exit. Here's the first strat that isn't speed tech. This will allow you to put hired hands to sleep while they're still holding items. Just drop them from a ledge grab while they're holding an item, and they'll keep it with them even while they're sleeping. Ah yes, the good old crush block chunk and temple. Not a complicated strat or anything, but here's a faster way to do this chunk. Doing duot runs often leaves us with 1 HP and no way to fall on the altar in the City of Gold. If a leprechaun is within reach, you can let them grab you to stun yourself on the altar. You can also use a broken arrow for this, since there is one available in the Star Challenge on the previous level. Mm -hmm. 
Ending the moon challenge early can save you a ton of time. All you need to do is use a crush block to break the mattock. This can be done by dropping it next to one and pushing, or placing it under one as it falls. This may seem a bit cruel, but killing a Salad Sister can actually have benefits. Killing one in 2-2 prevents the others from spawning, which can increase the chance of alters and other chunks in 2-3 and 2-4. Robbing the Hedget from the Black Market is simple if you have a Telepack. Just grab the clover to guarantee a max distance teleport, and hop between shops to stop the shopkeeper from getting angry. Here's the easiest of the many death skips used to save your Ankh and go to Abzu. Place three ropes in the locations shown, and climb to the top of the ones on the left and right, and place a bomb. If you do it right, you'll have a safe spot in the middle, which will allow you to jump up to the Abzu door with a couple more ropes or climbing gloves. Saving barely a second, this is probably the least important strat in the entire video, but necessary for top players regardless. If you let the Tiamat scream play out, bubbles will spawn for you to use, but the timer does not increase. If you find a vault below the eggplant child, you can safely teleport in and save them by using a bomb or two. Now the video example you'll see isn't ideal, but if you time your Maddox swing as you're running off a ledge, you'll be able to dig down much faster. This helps in the moon challenge as well. Stealing the Maddox from Ton in the moon challenge means we have a guaranteed Maddox in every run, which is crucial for most speedrun categories. This method is done by placing a bomb outside the door walking in and stepping to the side immediately, giving you access to the Matic. With this, you will need to deal with ton aggro for the rest of your run, so keep that in mind. If you have a telepack, you won't need to aggro ton, since teleporting into the moon challenge and stealing the Matic doesn't make her angry for whatever reason. This is the harder version of the temple low percent strat shown earlier. Optimally using two ropes and saving quite a bit more time over the push block since Olmec breaks through the ground faster. Here is another Abzu death skip, using a telepack this time. Placing a rope directly above the idol and teleporting just before the lava hits your character will keep you safe. Another skip that requires precise bomb placements. I will link to some helpful images for these skips in the description below, 
but you can see how I line up my hand with the ground texture before placing the four bombs in succession. Back whipping arrows can be incredibly helpful in Sunken City, but can even be used in dwelling in some situations. Just jump and whip while one block away from the arrow trap. Our first of many Chilin skips in the video, this one is by far the easiest once you know how to do it. Set up your ropes to enable you to reach the highest point possible. Make sure not to use your jetpack at all before you get on the top rope, resetting it on the ground with the laser. Tap your way up to the top and ledge grab or use a safety rope before hopping through the lasers at the top. Holding a bomb before entering this type of tube allows you to save some time in Sunken City during speedruns. Vlad's castle having a clover means you are able to do a 100% consistent teleport up to the crown and then back down. Pay close attention to the exact points where I start my teleports. Placing a bomb in the corner here and quickly whipping the crown will guarantee an easy Vlad kill every time. No teleport RNG necessary. Telefragging down into Anubis is almost always free since he has the tiles below him that allow for a safe teleport. Timing your jump on Osiris' hand with spike boots will allow you to instantly kill Anubis 2 and Osiris since spike shoes damage scales with time spent off the ground. Placing four bombs to the right of Tiamat on the bricks and whipping with the right timing is one of the most efficient ways to kill Tiamat in low percent. For whatever reason, a whipped landmine does not count as your kill, so doing a 3 bomb whip followed by a single landmine will keep your pacifist title at the end of the run. The Shrek Tiamat kill, named after a community member, has you rope, place a bomb one block higher, jump, climb up, and throw three new bombs, then immediately toss your cooked bomb for the kill. 100% consistent, and it times itself. This whip rob allows you to save a rope, but is a bit harder to pull off and requires some practice. Killing Tusk will cause 6-3 to be a smaller level, allowing you to save some time. There are a couple ways to kill her, but maticking the guard and placing a bomb is consistent. This is the easiest low percent Hundun kill you can do, being very consistent as opposed to regular floor strats which unfortunately can kill half your runs through no fault of your own. Bringing Hundun up the center allows you to hang off the tube on the left and bait the chicken head, repeatedly whipping it and letting the snake flame it between charges. After the chicken dies, you time your whips on the snake with no worry about the flame breath. Once Hundun is dead, you can take the tube on the right up to the top if you didn't allow it to break on the way up.
Staying horizontal with Hundun's heads and being a minimum of four blocks away will let you telefrag both of them. This can be dangerous, so make sure you're not going to telefrag yourself. This strat is similar to the egg strat, but it's far more dangerous, as I mentioned before. Sliding under Hundun when they lift up their leg and placing bombs at the right time is easy enough, but if you're doing low percent, the bombs won't be an option, and you'll be forced to resort to whipping all the way up. Easily the most difficult of the Abzu death skips. Cook a bomb right here and throw it at the exact moment to break only one block at the top. Jump away, letting one piece of lava drip and then quickly rope to safety. I do not recommend trying this unless you have no other option. The Chilin side skip is similar to the middle strat Reset your pack on the ground before tapping your way up, but this time, be careful with the spark traps and time your landing in a cubby to reset your fuel. Safety rope as necessary. Skipping with flads and climbing gloves is a bit more difficult, but with enough practice you'll have no problem with it. Time your hops along the bottom to make sure the sparks are clear. Climb your way up and then rope at the right time for a safe jump to the top. Ah yes, the infamous bubble skip. Easily the hardest trick in this video, and something I've still only done a handful of times. There are great tutorials for this that I will link in the description below, but the basics are using two ropes to bounce the bubble down and time your way up through the lasers to the top. This can become very reliable, but I'm going to need a lot more practice with it personally. The quad cook saves a second over the Shrek strat, but is much tighter on the timing. I put my hand in a claw formation when doing it since I play on controller, but it's a bit easier with the keyboard. All you have to do is cook a bomb, and as soon as you throw it, immediately follow it up with three bombs. The mash check is pretty intense. This tech is essential for high-end score running. Once the ghost splits into four, you can lure the sad ghost off screen into the abyss of any level to take it out of the equation. It's much easier on ice caves, but it is possible on any level. This strat, on the other hand, is only possible on ice caves, but it is too crazy to not include. If you have climbing gloves and a jetpack, you can make your way to the very bottom of the level and hang on until your head is just barely visible. Once you are in this position, whip five times while holding into the wall, rope down, hop onto your rope, and then climb down to the bottom of it. Of course, this is all being done off screen, so you're gonna have to learn the timing of it and it's very, very easy to mess up. Of course, this still leaves at least one ghost alive for gems, but if you do this before any of the ghosts spawn, you can get rid of all of them entirely.
For the final piece of tech, I give you telescanning. CO levels have never been so easy, as long as you have perfect eyesight and a mind faster than a dolphin. If you teleport through the loop, you can get a quick glimpse of the entire level, allowing you to scout for orbs without the need of going into the level itself. I've slowed it down a bit so you can see an example of what I mean here. And that was 44 different strats for Spelunky 2. I think it's safe to say this game is a little complex, and it hasn't even been a year since release. I genuinely mean it when I say that this community is unlike anything I've ever seen before. The amount of work people have put in to find all these different pieces of tech is truly astonishing, and I encourage you to join us in the journey to find the next 44 strats. I will include links to the community discord in the description, as well as resources to help you practice these tricks yourself. Special thanks to Hectic, Cloyce, Chaos Composer, Jeremy Hay, DT, and everyone else in the Spelunky community for helping me with this video. Thanks to the mod developers for giving me the tools to record all of this in a timely fashion, and thank you so much for watching. I spent over 20 hours making this video, and I hope it taught you at least a few things, even if you're not planning on using any of this tech yourself. Here's to another year in this amazing community. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, yeah, yeah.